The New York Times reports that in 2002, Vice President Dick Cheney argued that U.S. troops should be dispatched to Buffalo, New York to arrest terrorism suspects. Why use the military and not just the police, the FBI, like we normally do? Well, in the words of the Times, the suggestion was Mr. Cheney's strategy for, quote, testing the Constitution. Even though active duty troops hadn't been deployed in the U.S. for law enforcement since the Civil War, even though using our own military to arrest Americans on American soil is so blatantly illegal that it causes the Posse Comitatus Act to spontaneously combust in protest, Mr. Cheney argued it would still be worth a try worth testing it to see how it would work out. According to the Times, quote, several top Bush aides argued firmly against the proposal to use the military, and, quote, Mr. Bush ended up ordering the FBI to make the arrests in Lackawanna. Now, the, the case that's being made in the press right now by lots of unnamed former senior Bush officials is not just Dick Cheney as bad guy, Bush as good guy. It's Cheney as bad guy, thankfully constrained by George W. Bush, the noted civil libertarian, equal protection, anti-cronyism defender of the rule of law. The George W. Bush legacy project is in full effect, and its strategy, it seems, is to blame Cheney for all the worst stuff. Joining us now to sort this out is Pulitzer Prize-winning author and journalist Ron Suskind. He's author of the book most recently, The Way of the World, a story of truth and hope in an age of extremism. Ron, it's great to see you. Thanks it's for being here. It's great to be here. Do you think this is the George W. Bush Legacy Project at work? Well, it's uh, two projects that head-to-head -head -head in battle, the Cheney Legacy Project versus the Bush Legacy Project. Uh, you know, it's really two presidents in competition. It's an extraordinary thing to watch. I mean, it's like the Ali Fraser fight, two champions fighting it out, and it's going to go on for as long as Cheney and he keeps it going, frankly. Well, Cheney is doing fighting his own battles. Bush has unnamed senior yeah. Bush administration officials fighting it in his name. Let's be very clear here. What happened here was a deniability strategy. Bush and Cheney talk through all the key issues, and then Bush essentially unleashes Cheney. Says, I don't want to know the details. I want to know the top line. And essentially, Bush then becomes deniable if there is an emergency of, of transparency. Mm -hmm. That's the actual model here, to sever basic issues of accountability that the president uh, is supposed to be, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, constrained by. But to have Dick Cheney explicitly attacking the president uh, for not uh, pardoning Scooter Libby, uh, other issues like closing Guantanamo, torture regime, why is Cheney overtly attacking Bush now? Cheney thinks he was right and that Bush peeled back some of the extra legal stuff in 2004 and 5 and 6 and Cheney says, I'm right, you're wrong. The legacy of this period, the war on terror era, our era, it's my legacy. I was driving the ship, and my ideas, Mr. President, that's Cheney's view, were the right ideas, and the ones history will affirm is right. So at this point, you've got, I think, open warfare. And a lot of this, you know, Bush is a, a sort of a, the a propitious constitutional guardian is just, an, it's absurd. No one's above the rule of law, said Bush. Well, actually, really? actually, Ashcroft was the first one to say it. But, exactly. It yeah. just makes me cough out the word Geneva Conventions. Um, <laughs> w w what do you make of this reporting about 2000? specifically, the administration considering sending active duty troops, sending the army into an American suburb to arrest people. What do we know what was going on? Well, this is very important here. You know, first off, the, the information, the intelligence was very thin on the Lackawanna group, and there was a lot of debate as to what to do, because these guys were sitting around not doing almost anything, and frankly, much of their engagements looked like summer camp, jihadist summer camp. A, B, what was interesting at this point is Cheney had his eye on the 9-11 one-year anniversary. He wanted a big show, a show of force, a show of resolve, a show of expanded power. And that's part of what I understand was driving Cheney's desire to send troops into downtown Lackawanna. For the political anniversary, for the political resi yeah. politically resonant anniversary, let's Abs test the Constitution, show how much we've changed as a country because of the anniversary. Cheney is a big believer in demonstration models, so-called to shape behavior, to shape expectations, and to shape essentially other people's actions. This was part of that thinking. Now, it's interesting because up in Lackawanna, I talked to the folks in that case, the FBI guys were so conspicuous. Everyone knew the FBI was watching the guys. The guy just knew they were being watched. Everyone was sitting doing nothing. And even at the end of the day, there was very little evidence on the Lackawanna group. But Cheney still said, this is an opportunity to show our 
newfound resolve as to the powers of a president. Thank God we had that great civil libertarian holding down the West yeah, Wing. No, Incredible you. spin yeah, here. Yeah, Unbelievable. Yeah, really. Ron God. Suskind, thank you so much. Pulitzer Prize winning author and journalist. The latest book is The Way of the World, A Story of Truth and Hope in an Age of Extremism, which I read and I loved. It's great to see you, Ron. Yeah, it's great to be here. In the six and a half year course of our war in Iraq, 18 American servicemen are known to have been killed not by enemy fire, but by electrocution. Electrocution in American maintained facilities in Iraq. In early 2008, Staff Sergeant Ryan Maseth, a Green Beret, was killed while he showered in Iraq when an ungrounded water pump failed that electrified the metal shower and the hose. That system was set up by Kellogg Brown and Root, also known as KBR, which used to be part of Halliburton. They've had the giant multi-billion dollar logistics contract for supporting American troops in Iraq. According to a brand new Defense Department report, KBR did not properly ground and inspect their electrical equipment in Iraq. Iraq. Also, the Army itself failed to set standards for contractors like KBR and never even bothered to ask them to repair, like, oh, say, the electrical grounding system. Improper grounding and faulty equipment was reportedly responsible for nine of the 18 electrocution deaths known in Iraq. Staff Sergeant Maseth's mother, Cheryl Harris, is suing KBR. She told the Associated Press today that she was pleased with the report's findings. She said, quote, the results are revealing and contrary to what KBR and its president have continuously stated. At first, Ms. Harris was told that her son had brought some sort of appliance into the shower with him. Then they told him a story that he had touched hanging wires while showering. Neither turned out to be true. Staff Sergeant Maseth's death was just your standard, potentially criminal contractor negligence. There's more to come on this story, undoubtedly.